Howdy y'all, this is Rational Outlaw. Today I have a video by TED Talks. Now it's a little old now, but I still think it's a little relevant, considering the fact what the media is still doing, even today. But anyways, besides that, let's get on with the video. Let's say you despise Western democracy. Um, okay, I don't see why I would dislike Western democracy, but I'll play your game. Democracy and all its trappings, free elections, town halls, endless debates about the proper role of government, they're too messy, too unpredictable, too constraining for your taste. And the way these democracies band together and lecture everyone else about individual rights and freedoms, it gets under your skin. Oh man, why do I have to hate Western democracy so much? So what to do about it? You can call out the hypocrisy and failures of Western democracies and explain how your way is better, but that's never really worked for you. What if you could get the people whose support is the very foundation of these democracies to start questioning the system? Oh, oh, me, 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 me! I know an answer. How about the left news media perpetuating the Russian hack thing when there's no evidence to support it? Make the idea occur in their own minds that democracy and its institutions are failing them. Their elite are corrupt puppet masters, and the country they knew is in free fall. Oh, now I'm definitely sure. Yes, I know the answer. Please pick me, pick me. It's definitely the left news media. To do that, you'll need to infiltrate the information spheres of these democracies. You'll need to turn their most powerful asset an open mind, into their greatest vulnerability. Huh. As I recall, the media doesn't tell us to so much have an open mind. At least not the left news media. You'll need people to question the truth. Wait, when has questioning authority been a bad thing? Last I recall, that was a good thing. <gasps> Am I in opposite land? Now, you'll be familiar of hacking and leaks that happened in 2016. One was the Democratic National Committee's networks and the personal email accounts of its staff, later released on WikiLeaks. After that, various online personas, like a supposed Romanian cybercriminal who didn't speak Romanian, aggressively pushed news of these leaks to journalists. The media took the bait. They were consumed by how much the DNC hated Bernie. Oh, nope, never mind. I'm in the real world. At the time, it was that narrative that far outshined the news that a group of Russian government-sponsored hackers, who we called Advanced Persistent Threat 28, or APT-28 for short, was carrying out these operations against the U.S. Really? Wow, I never knew. I thought that was just all a lie. Well, you must have evidence for this, right? You wouldn't lie to me, right? And there was no shortage of evidence. This group of Russian government hackers hadn't just appeared out of nowhere in 2016. We'd started tracking this group back in 2014. Wow, really? Uh, well, um, why haven't we done anything yet? C can you please tell me that? And the tools that APT28 used to compromise its victims' networks demonstrated a thoughtful, well-resourced effort that had taken place for now over a decade in Moscow's time zone from about 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Oh my goodness, if we've known so much for so long, why haven't we done anything about it? Seriously, why would we just let them hack everyone? APT-28 loved to prey on the emails and contacts of journalists in Chechnya, the Georgian government, Eastern European defense attaches, all targets with an undeniable interest to the Russian government. We weren't the only ones onto this. Governments, research teams across the world were coming to similar conclusions and observing the same type of operations. Oh my gosh! How many people knew about this and did nothing about it? But what Russia was doing in 2016 went far beyond espionage. The DNC hack was just one of many where stolen data, 
was posted online, accompanied by a sensational narrative, then amplified in social media for lightning speed adoption by the media. What? This didn't ring the alarm bells that a nation state was trying to interfere with the credibility of another's internal affairs. So, why collectively did we not see this coming? Oh, me, 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 me! I know how to answer this. It's because everything you said about Russia hacking people up till now has been all pretty much uh, bullshit. <laughs> That includes your outrageous claim that the Russians hacked the DNC emails, bit. Why did it take months before Americans understood that they were under a state-sponsored information attack? The easy answer is politics. The Obama administration was caught in the perfect catch-22. By raising the specter that the Russian government was interfering in the U.S. presidential campaign, the administration risked appearing to meddle in the campaign itself. But the better answer, I think, is that the U.S. and the West were utterly unequipped to recognize and respond to a modern information operation. Okay, which is it? Do we have fantastic anti-hacking whatever majiggy? Skills, or do we have absolute <laughs> skills with tracking hackers? And quite frankly, I think I have a better answer. Everything about the Russian hack is utter bullshit. Despite the fact that the U.S. had wielded information with devastating success in an era not so long ago. Okay, yet again, which is it? Do we have fantastic? Hacking tracking skills, or do we have crap shit hacking tracking skills? Look, so while the U.S. and the West spent the last 20 years caught up in cybersecurity, what networks to harden, which infrastructure to deem critical, how to set up armies of cyber warriors and cyber commands, Russia was thinking in far more consequential terms. Before the first iPhone even hit the shelf, the Russian government understood the risk and the opportunity. The technology provided in the inner communication and instant、uh, communication that it provided us. As our realities are increasingly based on the information that we're consuming at the palm of our hand, and from the news feeds that we're scanning and the hashtags and stories that we see trending, the Russian government was the first to recognize how this evolution had turned your mind into the most exploitable device on the planet. Citation, please, because I call 100%. Bull crap! And your mind is particularly exploitable if you're accustomed to an unfettered flow of information, now increasingly curated to your own tastes. So, sort of like how media has been for decades now. This panorama of information that's so interesting to you gives a state or anyone, for that matter, a perfect backdoor into your mind. It's this new brand of state-sponsored information operations that can be that much more successful, more insidious, and harder for the target audience, that includes the media, to decipher and characterize. Um, what? No, seriously, what? What did, did you just say? Because I I didn't understand a word of what you just said. If you can get a hashtag trending on Twitter, or chum the waters with fake news directed to audiences primed to receive it, or drive journalists to dissect terabytes of email for a scent of impropriety—all tactics used in Russian operations. Oh, now I see what you're talking about. You're talking about the normal things that every news media and every other person does with social media. And I didn't know you were an expert in Russian operation tactics. Then you've got a shot at effectively camouflaging your operations in the mind of your target. This is what Russia's long called reflexive control. It's the ability to use information on someone else, so that they make a decision on their own accord that's favorable to you. Bullshit! 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 And oh, let's have one more bullshit. Oh. I guess I already said it. So while hacked phone calls and emails and networks keep grabbing the headlines, 
The real operations are the ones that are influencing the decisions that you make and the opinions that you hold, all in the service of a nation-state strategic interest. Yeah, no bit. I make my own decisions, and I come to form my own opinions. I might look for stuff for it to get information, but I make up my own mind. Russia doesn't make up my mind for me. This is power in the information age. And this information is all that much more seductive, all that much easier to take at face value and pass on when it's authentic. So now are you saying that we shouldn't look at information that could be very useful for the public to know about the DNC? Because it sounds like you're making an excuse for the atrocious things that the DNC has done. Who's not interested in the truth that's presented in phone calls and emails that were never intended for public consumption? But how meaningful is that truth if you don't know why it's being revealed to you? Why the f should the public care as to why information is being revealed to them? Why the f does that matter? You're just ignoring the huge problem here. The DNC did some absolutely disgusting things. It doesn't matter how it got to them at this point. What matters is the fact that the DNC is corrupt as This is far more than a network of computers and devices. This is a network composed of minds interacting with computers and devices. And for this network, there's no encryption, there's no firewall, no two-factor authentication, no password complex enough to protect you, what you have for defense is far stronger, it's more adaptable, it's always running the latest version. It's the ability to think critically, call out falsehood, press for the facts. And above all, you must have the courage to unflinchingly pursue the truth. What the f***? Now you're saying people should listen to the truth and be skeptical and search for the truth? What the f***? Because earlier you were just saying that we shouldn't question what the media says. Now you're saying we should question? Now, I'm thinking what you truly mean to say is be skeptical of everything that is not mainstream media. Or perhaps to clarify even further as to what I think you mean, be skeptical of everything that is not left news mainstream media. Examples would include the New York Times, CNN, ABC, MSNBC, and so much more. Well, that's it for today. If you guys like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. Also, follow me on all my social media. And if you like me even more, support me on Patreon and Vidme. I will also have the original video down below. And I'll see y'all later.